Dear students of standard 12, good afternoon to you all. Today we are going to discuss about human health and diseases. Before I start the topic, I would like to give some introduction for you. Now to keep our health in good condition, what are the things we have to follow? We have to think a little. For keeping the good health in our body, the food is the main, food is playing major role. The food, what is uh, grown in our surrounding, the fruits and vegetables which are cultivated in our surrounding, we have to consume such fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, grains, etc. And also the only prepared food materials we have to consume. We should avoid always the synthetic food which is available in the uh, market. We have to avoid completely. Because our body condition, our health condition is suited according to the climate, what is present in our surrounding. So for making our good health, we have to consume what are the food materials that are cultivated, that are grown in our surrounding. We should not take any foreign food substances or synthetic product. Normally we used to say, for the good health, food is the first and the best medicine, they will say. Now normally medicine is to cure the diseases, but the food is the one which is keeping our health in good condition. So it is my advice, you have to consume only the hygienic, homely prepared food material and also you have to consume the vegetables and fruits which are cultivated in our surrounding. Okay, now we will come to the topic, that is a human health, how to keep our health in good condition and what are the diseases that are caused in our body so that we are having so many, so many sufferings, we have to say. Now according to World Health Organization, the definition for health, that is a disease is, or health is, a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being. Being means a here, keeping our body in good condition. A state of complete physical, mental and social. That means physically we have to keep our body in good condition. Mentally our mind should be healthy. And also the socially we have to move very well with the society. Socially we have to be very alright. That is that is a definition for health according to World Health Organization. It is a state of complete physical, mental and social being. Even in any one dimension, whether physical or mental or socially, in any one dimension, if we are not alright, that means we are not healthy. We are having some health problem. Then in English, one saying is that it is health is wealth. Already even in the assembly also we used to say, health, if a health is in good condition, that is the first and the best wealth for us. If body is in good condition, if our mind is alright, if we are so socially we are moving very well, then we can earn and we can keep ourselves in good condition very well. Now if healthy, what are the things will be beneficial, you have to say. If we are healthy, more efficient to work, our body will be very very efficient to do all our work, daily work. Second one, if we are healthy, the longevity of the people will be there. The life of the people will be very, very long. Then if you are healthy, it reduces infant and adult mortality. Now we have to say what is mortality? Death. Mortality means death or death rate. Adult mortality, that means the death of the adult people. And also infant mortality, infant means a newborn child. Newborn children we can say. So it will reduce the infant and the adult mortality. So the people in the society will be very strong, very healthy and they can live for a long period of time. That is the meaning for this. Now we are going to see the important factors to maintain good health. We need some factors so that our health will be maintained very very well. What are the important factors we have to see? The first factor is personal hygiene. We are going to study in detail about what is personal hygiene. An individual, the whole body, how to keep the body in good condition. That is called the personal hygiene. Regular exercise. Now the regular exercise when we say 
don't think that it is only physical exercise it is a physical exercise plus mental exercise like yoga so regular exercise and a balanced diet now just before i told we have to eat good diet now we have to see what is a balanced diet now diet means food the food is having six important nutrients all the six important nutrients should be in a balanced condition so that our body will be kept in good health that is balanced diet these are the three major factors which are very very important personal hygiene regular exercise and balance the diet now we are coming to disease whenever we are not maintaining this a good health automatically some sufferings will be there in the body at the time we are telling that we have diseases we are telling now first we have to know what is the meaning of disease actually the word disease came from two terms this plus easy first i will tell easy physically and mentally you will feel easy if you are healthy that means you are normal diet is good we are doing physical exercise our personal hygiene everything is good we are all right perfectly all right we can feel easy in our body no sufferings no pain nothing that is called easy easy life you can see but this this easy means uneasy you can say here uneasy whenever we are having some suffering for example one symptom is a headache another one symptom is a fever whenever we have headache or fever or any other type of symptom we feel uneasy to do our daily work that is called a this easy now you add this a this plus easy disease will come that means our body is a feeling uneasy now what is the meaning of disease the definition we have to say it is the state of disorder our body is not in good condition it is a disorder or malfunction of body and the mind i have told you the three conditions physically we have to be all right mentally we have to all right we have to be all right and socially we have to be all right so body and mind should be mind will be having disorder that means they are not working properly they are malfunctioning malfunctioning means all the organs and systems are not working properly that is called so it is disease means it is a state of disorder or malfunction of body and the mind now the disease involves morphological what is the meaning of morphological external appearance external uh, parts of the body morphological physiological our body is uh, having so many organs and the organs are performing important functions the functions of the organ we can say physiological for example heart is pumping the blood lungs are uh, taking oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide kidneys are filtering the waste and eliminating the waste these are all the functions of various organs physiological and psychological psychological means psychology which is connected with our mind that is called a psychological disturbance the disturbance means it is not all right that means some problem is there in the body so physical morphological disturbance will be there physiological disturbance may be there or psychological disturbance will be present that is the, the disease now the disease also may be due to environmental factors then how we are getting disease there are so many environmental factors what is the meaning of environmental surrounding surrounding factors maybe the temperature the air water and so many things environmental factors may affect our body pathogens pathogens means disease causing organisms they may be microscopic organisms or they may be macroscopic organism but they are causing diseases pathogens means disease causing organism genetic disorders in our body in our cells in the chromosomes lot of genes are there the genes are responsible for various characters if any genetical abnormalities are present then the genetic disorders will be present or change in the lifestyle now mainly that is a factor most of the diseases are caused due to that particular factor change in the lifestyle normally we are having indian food indian culture everything is there but normally we are attracted by westernized culture westernized culture at the time our lifestyle is changing when lifestyle is changing food habit is changing if the food habit is changing balanced diet our body will not get so we are getting lot of sufferings lot of problems will be there it is called a nutritional deficiencies or nutritional problem hormonal problem so many things will come 
that is due to change in the lifestyle. Now these are also again introduction for diseases. First the health, after the diseases. Now we are going to see about the types of diseases. Now what are the various types of diseases are there? So many diseases, hundreds of diseases are there. But everything can be classified into two major groups. First is communicable diseases or infectious diseases. The second group is called the non-communicable diseases or non-infectious diseases. First I will come to the communicable. In the name itself we can understand what is the communicable. Communicable means transferring from one person to another person. Now some diseases are there which are always spreading from one person to another person. That is called the communicable. For example, a person is getting malaria. It is a type of fever. Now that malaria fever, the disease can spread from one person to another person by so many ways that we are not going to study now. But it is communicable, spreading from person to person in the society. That is called the communicable disease or infectious diseases. Now these diseases are caused by the entry of pathogens. Pathogens just before I told you. Microorganisms or macroorganisms which are causing diseases. So these are the diseases that are caused due to the entry of pathogens. That is the first one. Now we will take what is that? It is caused by the pathogen. Just now I told about caused by the pathogens like what are the pathogens which are causing diseases? We have to say viruses. They are ultra microscopic. Bacteria. There are so many unicellular organisms are present called the bacteria. Parasitic fungi. Already in one topic we have studied fungi. They are non-green plants. There are so many fungi which are microscopic at the same time they are causing diseases. They are called parasitic fungi. Protozoan parasites. There are certain unicellular animals called the protozoans. Among the protozoans some are parasites. They are entering into our body and they are causing diseases. And helminthes. Helminthes means worms. We can see them by naked eye. So they are called, they are macroscopic. Helminthes parasites. They are also entering into our body, not all the worms, some worms, and they are causing diseases. All these diseases caused by these are microorganisms and the macroorganisms are spreading from person to person, so communicable, otherwise infectious. Now we are coming to non-communicable diseases. There are so many diseases which will not spread from person to person. They are also called non-infectious, no microorganism entering and causing. Such diseases we can call as non-communicable diseases. The non-communicable diseases are caused by genetic disorder, gene problem. Okay, the gene problem, suppose one person is having some genetic disease, if the person is touching the other person or there is a sneezing or coughing, the disease will never go to another person. Now, genetic disorder. Nutritional deficiency diseases. Suppose one child is affected by protein deficiency disease. By touching the child, others will not get. That is called nutritional deficiencies and degenerative disorders. What is the meaning of degenerative? Sometimes the brain will be affected. Sometimes the nerves will be affected. That is called degeneration of brain, degeneration of nerves, degeneration of muscles, degeneration of bones like that. Some disorders will be there. By touching such person, we will never get the disease. That is called a non-communicable disease. One more example we can give. We can give. One person is having heart problem. One or two times that person suffered with a heart attack. Such a person is a sick person, diseased person. No problem. There is a, no doubt about it. By touching that heart patient, we will not get heart disease. We will not get heart attack. That is called non-communicable. A person is a diabetic. You know what is the meaning of diabetic? That person's insulin secretion is very less, so the blood sugar level is always a higher. That per person is called a diabetic patient. Now we are touching the diabetic patient, we will not get diabetic. So these are all generally called the non-communicable diseases or non-infectious diseases. Then we are going to see some common human diseases. There are so many diseases, but some very familiar and common diseases we are going to study. So some common human diseases we are going to study. In that, first we are going to see bacterial diseases. There are certain diseases which are caused by parasitic 
bacteria, parasitic and the harmful bacteria. So such a diseases we can call as bacterial diseases. Dysentery. Now dysentery means it is a loose motion with the mucus or blood. That is called a dysentery. Plague. Now plague is an infection in the internal organs. As a result of which the internal organ is a damage and the swellings will be there. That is called a plague. Now the next one is a diphtheria. Now the diphtheria means that these bacteria are attacking the throat and the nearby region of the throat. That is a diphtheria. Cholera. It is caused by bacteria, sometimes bacteria which are entering into long intestine and causing vomiting and diarrhea. That is called a cholera. Typhoid. It is a type of fever. It is also caused by some type of bacteria. Pneumonia. It is a respiratory problem. Infection in the lungs, infection in the bronchi, trachea, throat, etc. Respiratory problem. That is called pneumonia. These are also common, but don't think that only these are six diseases are caused by. There are so many others also present, but only selected diseases, common diseases we are taking. Viral diseases. Viruses means already I told you poison. All viruses are causing disease. No doubt about it. No one is a good. In bacteria we cannot do like that. Some good useful bacteria are there. Some harmful bacteria are present. But in the viruses all are harmful. They are also causing some common diseases in our body. First one is common cold. Throat infection. Running nose. Sneezing. That is only cold. Shortly we are calling it as cold. Common cold. Mums. That means the glands which are present in the mouth cavity. Salivary glands. They are infected as a result of it. Mums will be caused. Measles, respiratory infection of viruses. Viral hepatitis. Hepatitis means the infection in the liver. Hepatitis means infection in the liver. The infection in the liver may be due to bacteria or it may be due to viral. If it is due to viral, we have to call it as a hepatitis. If the viruses are entering into liver, the person is affected by jaundice. The viral hepatitis is also called the jaundice. Dengue fever, already very famous a few years before, dengue fever, everywhere it was spreading due to mosquito bite, My mosquito is not causing, mosquito is a mode of transfer, dengue fever, it is affecting the blood, the cells, everything, so dengue fever, chicken gunia, now the chicken gunia means the joints will be infected, bone joints will be infected, chicken pox, in the over the skin, blisters will be formed, that is a chicken pox, very common, Poliomyelitis, very shortly we are calling it as polio. That means these viruses are attacking the nerves of the hands and the legs. As a result of it, the growth and the movement of the hands and the legs will be affected. So the person will be paralyzed. The legs and the hands will be paralyzed. That is called a paralytic attack, we are calling. That is poliomyelitis. Fungal diseases, we are going to see. Now there are certain fungi, fungi means non-green plants. There are so many fungi which we can see by naked eye, like mushrooms, so many things are there. But there are certain microscopic fungi. But among the microscopic fungi, some fungi are parasites. They are entering into human body and they are causing the disease. The first disease is called the candidiasis. Now candidiasis is simply we can call as skin infection, rashes will be appearing on the skin. That is called a candidiasis. The next one is athlete's foot. Now what is the meaning of athlete's foot? Between the fingers of the toe. Now this fungal infection will be there and a severe uh, irritation and itching will be present between the toe fingers. That is called a athletic foot. Then we are coming to protozoan diseases. Protozoa. Unicellular of animals. Now they are also some are causing diseases. There are certain protozoans, they are called the parasites, they are entering into the human body and they are causing diseases. Now we are going to take a few diseases. First one is malaria, it is a type of fever. Now it is a spreading from person to person by a female anaphylis mosquito, that is a malaria. It is a type of fever. Amoebiosis, now see the spelling, amoebiosis, A E M E, we have to pronounce O E, but we have to call it as amoebiosis. It is a type of amoeba. That is a parasitic amoeba. They are entering into the body, sitting in the large intestine and causing the diarrhea. That is called amoebiosis. It is a type of dysentery. I already told you here, dysentery. It is a loose motion plus blood or mucus will come. Then African sleeping sickness. 
why we are calling it as african first time the disease was identified in africa so that it is called as african sleeping sickness now that sleeping sickness means it is shortly we can call it as coma okay so some protozoan parasites are there they enter into the body and they settle in the brain and attacking the conscious region of the brain as a result of it the person will become unconscious forever that is called as don't think that they are always sleeping they are unconscious but simply the name is given as sleeping sickness so it is african sleeping sickness another one is kala azar kala azar means infection in the vital organs by some protozoan parasite what are the vital organs important organs vital means important heart is an important organ lungs liver kidney spleen so many important organs are there they are infected and there is a attack that is called as kala azar now these are all the four diseases caused by protozoan parasites now we are coming to the last one helminthic diseases i have told you helminth means worms there are so many worms are there it worm round worm tail worm so many things are there but there are some worms which are parasite they can enter into our body and they can cause diseases so helminthic disease worm diseases we have to call now the helminthic diseases are first one ascariosis it is caused by one type of round worm microscopic round worm now the ascariosis is all uh, there is a causing large intestine problem intestine problem that is pain in the intestine the next one is filarial sorry filariosis filariosis it is also caused by some very very microscopic parasites these parasites are attacking the lymph glands as a result of it the leg will be swollen like elephant that is filariosis so it is also called the elephantiasis that this is also called elephantiasis now these are also the common diseases which we can see in our society some people are affected by these diseases so we are going to study the next one now bacterial diseases in the uh, the classification we have studied first one bacterial diseases so we are going to see about bacterial diseases in man say the bacteria when you take it they are unicellular microscopic organisms but so many bacteria are useful bacteria fermentation bacteria nitrogen cycle bacteria that is nitrogen fixing bacteria denitrifying bacteria so many bacteria they are good they are useful for the society but there are certain bacteria which are causing diseases in human being they are causing diseases in animals they are causing diseases in plants so they are called the parasitic and the pathogenic bacteria so such parasitic back pathogenic bacteria are causing certain diseases what are they you have to say how they are causing you have to say they are caused by pathogenic bacteria pathogenic means this is causing they produce toxin once these bacteria enter into the body these bacteria are multiplying after that they are producing toxins toxins means poison once the poison is produced the poison is causing the disease okay normally bacteria directly will not attack us the poison produced by the bacteria will give or will produce the disease so that the toxins to cause the diseases third they spread through different way of spreading from person to person what are they air they spread through air water aerosols aerosols means any chemical which we spray in the air that is called aerosols inhalation of droplets now first we will take what is a droplet now it is a, it is a droplet means it is very very uh, famous because of uh, this uh, covid 19 now what is a droplet whenever a person is coughing whenever a person is sneezing now from the nose from the mouth some mucus droplets are coming out some mucus droplets are coming out that they are invisible we cannot see but we can feel that the droplets the of mucus will float in the air when the nearby person is a inhaling inhalation that means taking the air inside during breathing the droplets with microorganisms will enter into other person and it will spread they sharing utensils now utensils means any articles which are useful for cooking sharing that that also possibilities and dresses suppose one person is having skin infection that person is wearing some clothes but the brother or sister or somebody else is wearing the cloth or touching the cloth touching the dress then that person will also get the disease now these are all the ways by which 
we can find the track that is the spreading of the diseases. So all these things are called agents of transmission. What are the agents? Air, water, aerosols, inhalation of droplets, and the sharing of utensils and the gases. All are the modes of or agents of transmission.